Gabe Miller here. I want to personally thank you for checking out our YouTube channel and I also want to encourage you to click the subscribe button so that you can stay current with all of our content on here. You can connect with us also on our website at yourimpactchurch.com and on all of our social media outlets at Your Impact Church. I hope this message encourages you, inspires you, and challenges you. Let's jump into the message. Well, good morning, church. Come on. Are you, are you enjoying the presence of God today? Come on, about half of the room is enjoying the presence of God. <laughs> we may need to change. We may need to flip the message right now. Uh, man, we're glad that you're here, and um, we're going to jump right in. I want to mention uh, just a few things really quick. You heard it in the announcement video, but grow groups begin this week, and so we've got groups on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Uh, we're confident for men, women, married couples, uh, just anybody that wants yeah. to go. Uh, there are a lot of different options, and I believe it'll be a blessing to you. I want to encourage you, get in a group, get in yeah. a group, get in a group, get in a group. This summer, uh, we're meeting back together in person in groups, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. We get to see people's faces again and have real conversation mm -hmm. uh, from across the room. And so we're excited about that. And I mentioned it last week, but we are uh, are targeting um, the first Sunday in July to be back with kids ministry. And in order to do that, we need your help. Yeah. And so, uh, we have some people that have served in kids ministry before that will be serving as well, but we're inviting you, uh, to be a part of investing in the next generation in that way. And so there will be a link up this week on the iKids page. And so yourimpactchurch.com slash iKids, there'll be a link on there where you can sign up to join that team and you'll be contacted. We can train you, get you all the information you need. Believe it'll be a blessing to those kids. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Uh, we need to be investing in them. And so we're excited about that. And then also, I think we have a couple of pictures. We're going to throw these up here real quick. As many of you uh, know, a couple of weeks ago, I think we were... Yeah. We're in the process of having this renovated. So a lot of the, as you can see, a lot of the inside, it's been, it's been gutted. It's been cleaned out. Uh, there you can see some people working on it. You saw the front, uh, what it looks like right now as they're beginning to do that. And the new roof, uh, that is, that's about half the roof that's taken off. <laughs> and so it's just open air right now. Come on. And uh, so we're, we're moving along. And I wanted, I wanted to encourage you with something because it encouraged me this last week. Uh, we had somebody that just contacted us and said, hey, I want to I wanna give you something. And they just showed up. They showed up and they said, hey, um, we just, I, I just, you know, felt like the Lord was leading me to give you this. And we had somebody that just showed up and gave $20,000 yeah, to go toward, <laughs> come on, isn't, <laughs> isn't God good? Yes. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we're hoping, the hope is to be in there in the fall. So um, that, of course, as we get closer, we'll, we'll kind of know more of a definite timeline and yeah. when that first Sunday will be in there but we're excited about that and if you will give me just a second I there has got to be a way on here technology is good until it's not <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it I was looking for a way on here to make my phone stop shutting off um, but hey we've been in a series that we've called see the new and uh, what we've said in this series is that we believe that God doesn't desire for us to go back to normal, yeah. but to step into something new, that there's a new thing he wants to do, and it may not look like what we thought it would look like. And uh, today we want to talk to you for just a few minutes on the subject of unity. Unity. Somebody say unity. Um, if I can just be real with you, this, this last week has been, uh, it's been, it's been a difficult week. It's been a it's been a very difficult week. Um, there's a lot of uh, I'll try to explain to you to the best that I can why it's been a little difficult. Um, I feel like we're kind of coming out of this COVID nineteen and coronavirus pandemic, and things are starting to kind of stabilize. And obviously, you're back in a building today, <laughs> worshiping together. Uh, but as I've seen people in our community and, and in our country and the struggle that's been going on with people coming out of this and not really, I mean, I feel like there are some people that don't really know what to do. Yeah. There are some people that, um, you know, how many of you know, I believe this, that 
whenever whenever you're squeezed, what's already in you comes out. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that I think a lot of us are having to deal with and work out, and God's trying to work out things in us. And so that's a that's a struggle sometimes for us as human beings. And then just everything that's going on in our country right now. Yeah. Um, it's... It's, uh, many of you know, I mean, I watched a video almost two weeks ago, and I told my wife we went to bed after I watched this video, and, and I thought, I shouldn't have watched that video right before we went to bed, because I cannot even sleep. I mean, just, just sadness and anger mm-hmm. at the same time. Anybody know what I'm, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then to see to see what's going on in our country, yeah. and to see how um, to see how the enemy is trying so hard to divide. Yeah, yeah. Divide, divide. I mean, he is he is giving it his best <laughs> shot yeah. right now to try to divide, and we want to just kind of speak from the standpoint of the body of body of believers yeah. and the body of Christ and and talk to you. We've titled this this talk today that unity is the key. And as we begin to talk about this topic, uh, it's important for you to understand a few things before we kind of jump in is that unity does not mean sameness. So sometimes we think, well, to be in unity, we have to be exactly the same. No, God created us all different. Yeah. Unity does not mean sameness. Unity is not uniformity. Yeah. It's not all of us walking around doing the exact same thing at the exact same time all the time. You know, that's that's not what unity is. Unity doesn't mean that we agree on everything. Yeah. If you and I were to sit down and have a conversation, there would be some things we wouldn't agree on. Yeah. But we can still be in unity. That's right. We can still be in unity. And we we kind of, there's this this definition of how unity is defined. Do you want to? To share that, yeah. what unity kind of kind of explains what unity, a great definition of what unity actually is and what it means. Yeah, and before I even get into that, I do want to pray. Um, but but um, well, I'm going to pray and then I'll start. <laughs> God, I just thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be here. God, we had a season where we we weren't able to be here together in person. But God, I thank you, Lord, that you were still working in that season just as much as you're working in this season. But God, we thank you for this gift of togetherness and even those that are watching online, Lord, that they are able to do that. God, we pray, Lord, that your heart will just be seen today. Lord, we declare your will, your way, your kingdom come, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I love how how God works because um, many times the worship team, there are some times... um, maybe a week or two ago, when, when Gabriel feels like God puts a song on his heart, he'll reach out and say, hey, this song's on my heart, can we do this? But this week was not that way. And um, the song, New Wine, it reminded me of this statement that I heard this last week. And it was the fact that as believers, God's called us to be new wine. And, and there's a difference when milk sets out and wine sets out. Milk gets rotten and wine gets better. And as God's children, as as believers, we're called to be like wine. We're called to get better um, and and not get bitter and rotten. And I think that that is such a struggle right now in this day and time because it's easy to be stirred by so many emotions. As he said, the struggle of coming out of COVID, and I can't tell you how many countless times we've heard, I feel weird, I feel drained, I feel, um, I feel depressed, and I've never felt that before. And I just want to tell you today that it's okay that you feel that way, um, but that God is still working, God is still moving. And today we want to shift our focus because I'm gonna, we're going to speak from a place that God just truly put on our heart, but um, my sister-in-law was saying something to me this last week, and I was like, that is so crazy that you said that, because that's exactly what we're talking about. And it was, we're hearing so many things of what we should and shouldn't be doing. 
and she was mentioning, we were just talking about the struggle of talking to our kids and, and how do we have these discussions with our kids and, and this, we should make our kids aware of the injustice and the, and the racism and, and the this and the that that's going on, but rather, and I'm just, this is my stance and if your stance is different, you know, I am not condemning you in any way because that to each this is the biggest thing. We all have to be led by Holy Spirit individually and in what we're called to do. But something that we were discussing was just how I don't want to point out to my kids the injustice. My oldest is sitting in this room. I want to teach her justice. I want to teach her. I don't want to, I don't want to push the issue of racism. I want to show her that whether color or, or size or whatever, that we're all the same and we all matter that kindness matters, that love matters. And in this time, and no matter what time it is, that the fruits of the Spirit were called to show those to no matter the person, no matter what. So today we feel strongly that we're called to talk about unity. And because we feel that in this time, we've got to shift our focus. We have to shift our focus because as he said, there's so much division, so much hate, so many things stirring in our world today. And we believe that God desires for unity in his people, for unity. So I'm going to define unity. Unity can be defined as any group of people who are characterized by a shared purpose, vision, or direction. It's not about being the exact same, but about advancing toward the same goal. What our body needs right now is unity. We've been through COVID, we need unity. Our country is experiencing tragedy, we need unity. We're experiencing division, we need unity. You know, I told him I was, just this last Thursday, we were praying and just turned on worship music and I said, it's so hard because there's such a tug of war. When I say that people have come to us and said, we feel drained, we feel depressed, we feel these things. We've struggled with so many mixture of emotions too. So many days of feeling funky and we don't know why. So many days of just feeling sad. So many days, like he said that night when he watched that video, he was just so angry. But, but what we need right now, we need Jesus more than ever before. Our church needs Jesus. Our, our city needs Jesus. Our country needs Jesus. There's a verse, um, Romans chapter 5 and verse 20. And I want to read from the Amplified Bible. It says, but the law came to increase and expand the awareness of the trespass by defining and unmasking sin. But where sin increased, God's remarkable, gracious gift of grace, his unmerited favor has surpassed it Amen. and increased all the more. And I want to encourage you today that God's grace surpasses sin. That's right. Um, where sin increases God's grace increases all the more Amen. and if we're going to ever really impact the world for the better the answer has to be Jesus yeah and there's a prayer that Jesus prayed while he was on the earth about 2,000 years ago that I want to read and it's in John 17 and many of you have probably read this before I want to start in verse 20 Jesus says I pray for these followers but I'm also praying for all those who will believe in me because of their teaching Father, I pray that they can be one. As you are in me and I am in you, I pray that they can also be one in us. Yes. Then the world will believe that you sent me. I have given these people the glory that you gave me so that they can be one, just as you and I are one. I will be in them and you will be in me so they will be completely one. Then the world will know you sent me and that you love them just as much as you love me. Father, I want these people that you gave me to be with me where I am. I want them to see my glory, which you gave me because you loved me before the world was made. Mm. Father, you are the one who is good. The world does not know you, but I know you, and these people know you sent me. I showed them what you are like, and I will show them again. Mm. Then they will have the same love that you have for me, and I will live in them. Jesus didn't just pray for himself and he didn't just pray for the disciples that were with him at the time, but he prayed for us. Mm -hmm. He prayed for all those who would believe because of the teaching, yeah. because of what was going to go forth into the world, yeah. because of the gospel. He was praying for all of us. 
that would at some point in our lives receive what Jesus did for us. And I find it interesting what he prayed for when he was praying for the disciples, he was praying for you, he was praying for me, he prayed for unity and love. Unity and love. I, I, I pray that they would be one so that the world will know that you love them just as much, just like you loved me, that you love them. And God's desire for us all as his followers is for us to be in unity, not for us to be the same because we were created unique, but to advance toward the same goal. Amen. Not for us to look exactly the same, but for us to move in the same direction. Amen. For us to have the same purpose, the same goal, the same direction that we're going. And when believers are in unity, working together for the same purpose and direction, that's when the world will know the love of God. Yeah. I mean, Jesus said, this is how they're going to know that you're my follower. It's by the way that you love one another. Mm -hmm. I pray that they would be one as we are one. I pray that there would be unity. They're each individually unique but that they would be united yeah, working toward the same mission and toward the same goal. And here's something else that Jesus said that really is on the opposite side of this. It's in Mark chapter three. He says, if a kingdom is divided, split into factions and rebelling against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. That's right. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Mm. And I believe that at this time in our country and our world and what we're experiencing that we need to begin to move toward unity. Yeah. There needs to be some kind of progress toward unity yeah. as the body of Christ. We are the representation of Jesus. That's right. To be a Christian means that you are like Christ. Yeah. That I am like Christ. Yeah. And Jesus prayed for us. And he said, I want them to be one. I want them to be in unity. I want them to be able to show the world the love that I have for them, the love that the Father has for them by being united, by being one, and working toward the same goal. Unity must prevail and division must cease. Unity brings progress and division tears apart. You know, I... You may be here today and you're like, I get it. We need unity. I'm not the one causing the divide. I don't feel racist. I, I really didn't struggle during COVID or whatever it is. We believe that this is so much about our focus, but this is so much even just beyond our country, even, even as a church body, that right now the enemy is being so strategic about more than ever, we don't want to be part of groups. We want to isolate because we just walked through a season of being alone and it was kind of nice. And, and now maybe you feel like, I don't even want to get in a grow group. That's exactly what the enemy wants. And once again, I'm not condemning you. If you're not in a grow group this semester, I'm not, I'm not condemning you. But even if just, just reaching out and finding other believers to, to get around you, to not isolate, because we need unity more than ever before. But we were even just talking about um, this last week on our date. Uh, we were just talking about how just that statement that you um, steer where you stare. And, you know, I think about our two-year-old, um, well, even all of my kids, but I, specifically my two-year-old at this phase that we're in. And um, she, you know, she's trying everything. Um, um, it just, she's into everything. <laughs> and um, I think about if I just constantly walked around and saying no to this, no to that, pointing out all the things she can't, she doesn't need, then she's going to constantly focus there. But rather, I'm helping her focus on have. And that's really the heart behind this is we want to, we want to point our eyes in this direction because I believe that not in a place, not coming from a place of denial. We are aware. We have been, honestly, we've watched the news and listened to the news more than we have ever because I'm just not a huge fan of it. I just, just my personality. Um, but we have tried to be a little bit more aware of what's going on. And so I'm not talking about like, let's shift our focus so we can be in denial. But here's what I believe, that if we get so focused on all the bad that's happening, we, we end up planted in a place of despair. And, and that's not a place that God wants us to be either. Because despair leads to that hope. 
you know, just dissipating. And, and we don't, we're not called to that either. So I believe that there's a place in between where we're not denying what's happening, where, but we're also not living in a place of despair. And if we constantly get so focused on, on the news and, and all the negative, we will end up in a place of despair. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I've had my own moments of it because, oh, so much, <laughs> so much. But um, the, the big thing is our focus. Let's focus on what the solution is. And when we say that, you're like, great, here's unity, and this is the focus. We don't have all the answers. Um, it's like what I told someone last, uh, in the last couple of weeks, they came to me, or they were just talking, and I shared with well, uh, just a collective group of people. I said, you know what, I feel like God just continues to remind me of is my job is to pray and to spend time with him and allow him to show me um, and I believe this is true for all of us, allow him to show us individually what we're called to do. Because I can't tell you what's right for you, Margie, but Holy Spirit will, you know, and we're all going to face different moments where he says, I want you to take a stand in this moment. And, and that looks different for all of us. We're still standing for what's right, but it's going to look different. And, and I think that we just have to be careful. And that's why we're not going to be up here trying to give you one, two, three steps. This is what you must do. Because I can't tell you exactly what the Lord's going to lead you to do. But he will. He'll be faithful to show you. So we focus on the solution. We, we get united around the fact that Jesus is ultimately the solution. And I think about even in our marriage, um, it was one of the things that when God began stirring this in our hearts this last week, um, it wasn't originally in the plans for us to, to speak together. We were talking and then um, he mentioned it and I'm like, okay, well, you go pray about that and then, um, and then we'll see, you know, and so I was like, I think you could totally just do this and, and do this passionately without me. And, um, and then he just said, no, I really feel like this is what we're supposed to do together. And and I think about in our marriage, if, if we were struggling in our marriage, which we do have seasons of struggling, but if we were struggling right now in our marriage and that was all I focused on was our struggle, we would never make any progress. We would never get better. We would turn into milk and literally get bitter and nasty. And so that's kind of the point in this, like reshifting our focus once again, not that we have all the answers, not that this is a foolproof plan, but we just feel like it's almost like um, I think about with our kids and our two-year-old started doing this and she'll grab my face and turn it towards her. And it's like that, that God today um, wants to just turn our heads a little bit, shift our positions in our seats because um, our hearts are broken with you. Our hearts are angered in some ways, but what we believe is that God doesn't... Um, God doesn't desire for us just to stay there. He's going to show us how to take stands. He's going to show us how to stand for truth. Um, and so we're going to break down the word unity today and something that we feel like God gave us. And so you, the you today, is understanding that unity doesn't always come through just gaining more knowledge. And once again, with our marriage, it's just what came to us. And I told him, I said, I'm struggling with this because this isn't a marriage message, but I think that God is using it so much even to show me, even for my own marriage, but just in our country, um, how much we need this in our city. But I think about once again with our marriage and we could, I could, you know, when we get married, Cassie and Stephen could get a, a paper on each other, a document that says these are all the facts about each other and they read them. But when they never have conversation they never gain understanding of each other. And, and so I think that that's the part about this is we wanted this to be more of a conversation to gain understanding. And we have to be willing to do this. I heard a pastor this last week say we have to be willing to sit before we take a stand. And I think so many times we're so quick to want our own opinions to be heard and we're not quick to listen and hear understanding from someone else, get understanding. Um, because uh, I have a friend and she says this often uh, to me and, and you may have heard her, she goes to our church, she says we have to first seek to understand before we're understood. And, and I believe that that's a situation right now if we will focus on being understanding rather than just trying to be understood. Um, that, that people will be willing to listen to us and try to understand. And I believe that this applies in so many ways. Maybe you're listening and you're like, once again, I think I kind of hit on this, but 
this is not just about our country. You're like, oh, I'm not having problems with these things. This is, this is in your home. This, these are things you can apply in your home, in our church, in this community, in this city, no matter what. So, And I want to go back to something that Amanda mentioned a minute ago when our two-year-old grabs. You ever had somebody, like, try to get your attention <laughs> and they grab your face and they're just, like, turning it towards you or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> you ever had that moment when somebody does that and you're like, <laughs> child, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to grab. I think there's that tendency sometimes. Yeah. Even when even when the Lord is trying to get our get our attention and get our mm. focus and say, hey, listen, I've, I've got the answer. I've got the solution. Like, I can lead you. I can guide you. And sometimes we have a tendency to be like, you know, that's good. And, and and we don't we don't want sometimes I think we we have a tendency to not really even want to be led because we just want to be, you know, out there more than we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so uh, I would encourage you that you just got to be praying. Yeah, you got to be praying. Yeah, we got to be people that pray and uh, going back to this understanding, we have to learn how to be understanding of where each other has come from. Yeah. Uh, and we're not talking about accepting sin. This is not like we need to be understanding and just accept everybody's sin and accept everything that's going on. That's not what we're talking about. What I'm talking about is the body of Christ. Yeah. Understanding that you were brought up different than me. Yeah. Understanding that you have had different experiences in your life than yeah. I have. Understanding that you came from a different family background than I came from. Yeah. And we're all trying to get together in unity, understanding yeah. that I've experienced this, and so this is my perspective. And I've experienced this, and this is my perspective. Yeah. And we don't have to be the same, and no two people are ever going to be raised exactly the same or brought up exactly the same or, or yeah. understand everything. But when we... But when we start working toward unity and we start getting to know each other and I understand, wow, okay, that's, man, I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I didn't, I never knew that you, that that's, that's what you came out of or that's what you have experienced. Whenever we begin to really understand each other, yeah. then we can start working toward the same mission. That's right. Then we can start working toward the same goal. We can, we can be in unity, mm -hmm. not, not the same, mm -hmm. but in unity. Yeah. Um, the end, the next letter in unity and really just kind of these, these things, like how can we step toward unity? Understanding is one, uh, non-negotiables is another. And let me explain to you what I mean by non-negotiables. We have to have some non-negotiables in our lives so that when something happens and we're bombarded by bad news or something is extremely frustrating to us, we lean into the things that we have pre-decided. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we head down the wrong path or we, uh, you know, we respond in a certain way because there may be some, like, we didn't pre-decide yeah. in our lives what the response would be or what, uh, what I was going to lean into. So, for instance, my response will always be in love. It's a non-negotiable. So no matter what happens to me, no matter, no matter what bad news, no matter what, what uh, is said, I've already pre-decided that my response is going to be in love. The yeah. words that I speak are going to bring healing. It's a non-negotiable. Uh, the answer is always Jesus. It's a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. You know, like some things that we know are definitely uh, the truth and how God wants us to uh, be united and how we can move toward unity mm -hmm. is when we have pre-decided, we have non-negotiables. Like no matter what happens, I'm, it's always going to be in love. It's always going to be bring healing. It's always going to be, you know, that Jesus is ultimately the answer. Amen. And when we do that, I think it heads us in the direction of unity. Non-negotiable, and you might be thinking, well, non-negotiable with what? Um, here's the first thing that I felt like in my spirit, I was thinking, okay, if we need to have some non-negotiables, why? Um, what, are, what, are we, what are we not going to negotiate with? Our emotions. Yeah. I'm not going to allow my emotions to negotiate me out of being Christ-like. Mm. I'm not going to allow my emotions nego to negotiate me out of being in unity with you. Yeah. I'm not going to allow my emotions to negotiate me out of what I know God is calling me to do. And sometimes our emotions will take over. And emotions are good. Don't get me wrong. You, you need emotions. God created you with emotions. Um, he, you're in his image. There, you have emotions. Yeah. 
but we we have to have some non-negotiables that even when even when anger rises up, even when sadness rises up, even when frustration rises up, that I've already pre-decided that my response is going to be this. That yeah. that it's going to be in love. It's going to bring healing. It's going to be in the name of Jesus. It's yeah. you know it's it's going to bring people together. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And just speaking on emotions, I think it just kind of goes right back to even understanding that even while we don't want to be led by our emotions, we also, I think it's during this time, especially, but no matter what time we're in, we're all called to give grace. But I think even during this time, um, one thing that the Lord continues to teach me and has used people close to me in my life to remind me is that we need to be understanding of each other. Um, Understanding that I may catch some emotion from my husband or from a friend, but try to be understanding and compassionate that we don't know what they're going through. And maybe you do know what they're going through. Sometimes even when you know what they're going through, I know a little bit more of what he's been going through this last week, but it's sometimes hard to extend grace and understanding and compassion. And I think that during this time, more so than ever, it's, it's a great thing that the Lord can teach us to be extra understanding um, of each other and, and know that, yeah, I, I, I'm not giving myself a pass to, to lose it with Susan, um, but that when I do, that hopefully, you know, that there's that moment or Susan loses it with me in a moment that we could extend grace to one another and know that, that we're human you know, and, and there's so much um, in our lives, whether with kids or our workplace or, or whatever, so much has changed and shifted in the world right now that sometimes we just struggle. And, and I think that sometimes that, those moments are, are hard to be understanding and, and gracious and, and show compassion. And we had a conversation this last week, like he said, this was a tough week for a really tough week for him. And, um, he, he had asked me in a moment, he said, please forgive me. And I, I told him, I was like, you know, I said, I'm the one that struggles with more of a temper than him and, and being a little off with my, like being ugly with my mouth. And, um, and so I said, who am I to not extend grace to you? Because not only did Jesus give so, so much grace to me daily, but um, he is so gracious to me when I you know, have my moments. And so I I think it just applies all over. We just learn to be gracious to one another, understanding and compassionate. But anyway, so the I. I love that this I is planted smack in the middle of this word because what we believe that the Lord told us was we need intimacy. We need intimacy with our Father um, to have unity ultimately. Um, We have to know the Father and His voice. We have to have intimacy with him. I read this statement this last week. If we don't connect to the source of our power, we won't be able to sustain the journey ahead. And I I think that's the way that we are. We're we're constantly like running a race, but never plugging into the source. And and we have to have that intimacy. It's it's not because... um, it's, it's not because you're lesser than when you don't. It's just that we're missing out when we don't. We're missing out on all that God wants to give us when we don't. Um, his heart and his will will guide us in the same direction. It leads us toward the same purpose and moves us toward the same goal. And, and I think about, there was a song that we used to sing, Hosanna, and at the uh, bridge says, Break my heart for what breaks yours. And it was a statement that he said to me um, when we were preparing for this. He's like, I just think, like, what if we all ask God to break our heart for what breaks his? But then he went on, and and we were just talking how this brokenness, it doesn't lead us to gossip. This brokenness doesn't lead us to sin. It doesn't lead us to lash out. This brokenness that God gives us, it leads us to pray. It it leads us to unity with our brothers and sisters. It, It leads us to love. Just like that scripture he mentioned earlier that the things that Jesus prayed was for unity and love. All the fruits of the Spirit, but unity and love. That's good. The T, um, the word that that I was feeling was the word truth. That to step toward unity, um, we, have to, we have to make God's truth our priority because... His truth is what changes us. That's right. And we have to lean into and rely on his truth. Yeah. 
um, what matters the most is truth. And Todd White, he made a couple of statements that I want to quote. He said, if we don't get our minds set on the truth, we're going to get our minds set on the things of this world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy to drift and your yeah. mind get focused on on uh, this over here and have to bring it back to the truth. Yeah. And another thing that, that he said, he said, sometimes when we, what we see on the news often overwhelms what God said. <laughs> um, and I want to say this, the answer, uh, the answer is not going to really be found in the news. It's, it's not really, it's not really going to be found in the media. The answer is going to be found in Jesus. And when we begin to lean more into Jesus, then we be, then we're leaning into trying to hear everything. Then, then when we're walking in that, we can make a difference. That's right. When we're walking in the truth and we're leaned into, okay, God, what are you, what are you saying? What does your word say? Yeah. What, what, what should we, what should we do right now? Yeah. What steps should we take? What stand should we take? What direction should we go? And we're leaned into that rather than allowing outside voices a lot of times to, to tell us. Yeah what we should be doing, but we lean into the truth. And I want to bring, um, is Lucas in the room? Will you come up just on the keys? I think we're, we're going to switch it up a little bit today to end this. We're going to pray together in just a moment, but uh, we're going to do this last letter. You want to take the, the last one? Yeah, yeah. You know, and lastly is the why that it requires you. And I want to make clear today that we are not bashing the news or the media in any way. This is not what this this is about. Um, they're doing their job. I get that. Um, I just think that we we both talked about we just got to be aware and intentional that we're leaning into Jesus and aware of what he's saying and where he's leading over what the media is making us aware of. Watch the news if you enjoy watching the news. Be aware once again but we're just keeping Jesus where Jesus belongs and at, the, at number one, that you, unity requires you and me. Um, it requires our willingness, your willingness and it mine <laughs> to be understanding. It requires, just like Gabriel talked about, our pre-decided response of love and unity. That in a moment I pre-decided I predecided. It requires your investment in intimacy with your heavenly Father. It requires your commitment and mine to the ultimate truth and not just opinions. Unity requires you and me. It requires Jesus can do so much, but as he mentioned earlier, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And we are on this earth for we don't know how much longer. And there are people that need to know him. They need to know his love for them. His heart for them. Because hurting people hurt people. And I believe that so many that are being so hateful are hurting right now. And yes, justice needs to be served. But also love needs to be shown. And it's our job as his children, as believers, to be his hands and feet to show him to this world. And as the body of Christ, we're going to end with this and then we're going to pray. Um, We're called to unite, stand up for what's right. Um, I was thinking about this this last week and how we're, we're called to stand up for truth, to stand on the word of God. We're called to unity and not division. That gossip tears apart. Selfishness doesn't make a difference. Racism is wrong. Murder is a sin. Our anger has the potential to lead us to sin. Yeah. You know, the Word of God says be angry, but don't sin. Yeah. It's okay to be angry. It's just what you do with it. Yeah. How you process it, what you lean into. And I know today, um, <laughs> you can probably tell, and we'll pray. This is heavy. Um, it feels heavy. We're 
we're talking about these things that are, are a sin, and really there's only one answer for a sin problem. And it's Jesus. Yeah. There's, there's one answer yeah. for a sin problem, and it's Jesus. That's right. And can I just, can I just say this um, as boldly as I feel it, that the body of Christ, the capital C church, it's time that we stop talking about praying and actually pray. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of times we'll say, well, I'm, I'll pray for you. I'm praying for that. Are you? Are you are you praying for your leadership? Are you praying for the president? Are you praying for the people that are being severely impacted by what's going on? That's good. Are you, are you praying? I mean, man, prayer is like our, I mean, prayer is, it changes things. Yeah, it does. It is a weapon. Yeah. Are we praying? Yeah. Are we praying that God would, would do what only he can do? I think it's time that 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 we work toward unity. Yeah. And what it looks like to be the church. And to work together. Yeah. And stand up for what's right. Yeah. And lean into the Holy Spirit and follow the direction of lean into truth. Yeah. And pray. Yes. Pray. Will you stand to your feet today? We're going to pray and dismiss. And I know we're over on time, but we'll make it work for today. I, I put this down. I want to read this and then, then we'll pray. It's that we can let the difficult season of COVID-19 and what's going on in our country, we can, we can let it separate or we can let it bring us together. Yeah. It can separate us, it can cause division, or it can lead us to start saying, wow, how can we be in unity? Yeah. How can we understand? How can we respond? How can we have more intimacy with our Heavenly Father so that we are so in tune that we, that, that we can just have a conversation with Him? Yeah. And so I'm going to ask Amanda to pray and really what we're praying for is is unity unity in the church the capital c church unity in this body unity in our community unity in our country that that the capital c church that believers everywhere that there would be unity yeah there'd be unity and so will you will you pray for us as we end today and I just want to point out one more thing. Um, what I don't want to make it sound like is like Jesus is God is some kind of rub the, what is it called? The genie, genie lamp. Thank you. It's not that. But one thing that was not mentioned earlier when he shared about the check um, that showed up at our door, we literally, it was, it was at the same time that we kept feeling like the Lord said, pause and praise me and when she knocked on our door I got up off the floor off my knees and we listened and I came in and I wept not because I'm not telling you today you're going to go get on your knees you're going to get a $20,000 check but because God so kindly reminded us he works while we worship. He works while we lay things down at his feet. He works and he does things that we could never do on our own. He knocks down walls 
that we could never knock down. He provides jobs you could never go grab. (laughs) He's got us and he's working. I just encourage you, your family, whoever it is, grab their hand. I know we're distancing in a way and if you don't feel comfortable with grabbing their hand, that's okay too. But if there's someone that you feel comfortable grabbing their hand, God, I just thank you for who you are. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are a God of unity. God, right now, God, even I know through this message, I was convicted of things that, God, that I don't pray for the president as much as I should. But God, I thank you, Lord, that there's no shame. But Lord, I pray for enlightenment today, Lord, that you have enlightened our eyes and our ears and our hearts to things may be different for all of us, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that we not just take this truth and do nothing with it, but God, that we go out and we walk it out. Because God, that's when we're transformed and we're changed and this world is changed. God, and just like the name of our church is, Father, impact, Father, that it was not just happened to be that. It's because we want to be people of impact. You have called your children to be people of impact. And God, right now, I pray for the families that have lost loved ones. Lord, that you are touching them. God, even for the families of those that did wrong, that are hurting now because their spouse and their father is no longer in their home. God, I lift them up to you today. God, I pray for our churches, not just Impact Church, but our churches in general. Lord, that we will rise and be your hands and feet. God, that we will allow unity and love to flow from us. God, I pray, Lord, that that our city, God, what the enemy is trying to divide will be united like never before. God, what the enemy is trying to use for evil, God, you will turn it for your good in Jesus' name. God, we declare unity. We declare unity in Jesus' name. We declare healing. God, just like your word promises that if your people will humble themselves and pray, you will heal our land. God, right now we humble ourselves and we pray and we declare healing over your land, over your people that hurting hearts will find healing and they will see your love. God, that we will look for simple ways to encourage and bring hope. God, that we will not live in a place of denial, but we will not live in despair either. God, we will hope and trust in you, knowing that you, God, will bring unity to your churches, to your city, to the city, to your country, like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here today. Um, Let's work toward unity. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We hope you have a great week.